thank you all and I thank Professor Seti for giving me this opportunity to have a conversation with you through this uh, mode of talk on environmental ethics. I don't think that we need to uh, discuss on environmental ethics, particularly on the topic uh, ethics, because uh, uh, as I saw the uh, skits and the, you know, listened to uh, the beautiful poem, uh, it was wonderful. I think uh, uh, precisely the essence of my talk is already, you know, gone into uh, your mind. So I don't think there is a need to uh, have a talk and a conversation, but. I would also suggest that more we talk, more we inculcate uh, values, it enriches us. So there is no limit to uh, have a conversation on ethics. So in that context, I would like to uh, put forward some of the ideas uh, that have been uh, you know, uh, there for long. And uh, people uh, who are studying environment have tried to look at those ideas and try to see that how we can understand the concept of environment from an ethical perspective. That is the gist of uh, uh, my talk that we need to understand the concept of environment from an ethical uh, viewpoint. And without ethics, I don't think that you know, uh, we can have a better understanding of environment. So, when we talk about ethics, we uh, talk about values, we talk about practicing those values, storing those values, we store them, we preserve them, and uh, these values are essential and in our everyday life, we show them to others that how these values are no, uh, with us. So it is shown through actions. So without uh, inevitable that will not act. Every individual has to act. Every individual has to live and therefore he has to exhibit values in their actions. So uh, it is through actions actually we um, narrate values. We conceptualize new values. We try to uh, put them in a theoretical framework of our academic life. So it is in that context I am talking about how uh, ethics is a, is a part of our uh, life. And uh, it is true that we all know about human suffering and we all are aspiring for a good society. Suffering has you know, various, uh, uh, for various reasons, is not it? So uh, when we look at these reasons, uh, there is uh, stories of homicide, robbery, rape, famine, political assassination, terrorism. Apart from this, we also have a problem about environment. It's not the, the concept of climate change, pollution, etc., etc., which uh, um, are somehow connected to our everyday uh, life of. Uh, uh, everyday life and we need to, we are horrified precisely because we do not have easy solution to these issues. So therefore, when we talk about what that we are looking for, we find that there is no easy solution therefore, no, no need to think about it. It is not our responsibility to think about it. So all kinds of easy methods and answers are sought when we talk about uh, now problems that we encounter in our life or it is not our problem. One way of dealing with it is that it is not my problem, it is not uh, my neighbor's problem, it is uh, nobody's problem but everybody's problem. So it is, it is in that kind of you know, scenario in which we all live. And, but we understand this much that something is wrong and it is, uh, uh, it has to be deeply uh, thought about and we need to think 
as a responsible citizen of uh, the country or of the state. So therefore, we need to talk about ethics. And when we talk about ethics, we also uh, try to see that it has a cope. And uh, we need to talk about uh, laws that operate in that particular scope and or framework in which we live. And we find that this is what I should do, this is what I should not do. So our social life is in a way very much constructed and that influences our individual personal life. Sometimes we find there is a conflict between the social and the personal. That is, that is one point which we can um, think of. And this is a summary what ethics is all about. I thought that this quotation will be a meaningful quotation to talk briefly about what ethics does. And I have taken it from an environmental um, ethics anthology. There are different types of ethics in academic uh, studies. One of them which we are interested and we will be uh, studying today is applied ethics. The other kinds of ethics are general study of ethics, study of ethics of right action, moral psychology, etc., etc. Uh, we are not concerned about that. We are concerned about only applied ethics that how we can deal with environmental problems, the crisis that we encounter in our life and that has to be uh, resolved. So that is the point where we will be focusing today. Uh, so therefore, uh, there are different kinds of uh, applied ethics which has been um, practiced in academics today. One is apart from environment, one, one can think of how to use medicine, drugs, um, how an engineer should uh, as a professional should behave, you know, should uh, perform his uh, job. So there are engineering ethics and I am sure all of you are engineers or training engineers. So in that sense, there is an engineering ethics which has been taught as a part of professional ethics. There are business ethics, those who uh, deal with business. But what is our interest here is to talk about uh, environment because environment is suffering and the reason of suffering is, I think we are not here to discuss about the reasons why environment is suffering. But at least we have a prima facie evidence that there is a crisis and we need to resolve on that. And uh, when we look at this crisis, we find uh, air pollution, water pollution, loss of biodiversity, loss of soil and engendered species, etc. So, uh, so it is in that context we need to re-examine uh, the human nature relationship and what is the philosophy behind this engagement. Because uh, the crisis is basically rooted in our everyday engagement with an nature or environment. So therefore, we need to relook at things that are there and things that have gone wrong in our approaches. So, uh, or the theories that we have followed in the past. So it is in that context uh, our re-examination is basically uh, a mandatory uh, one. And when we talk about uh, uh, the re-examination, we also need to see that what is the ethical approach or a theoretical, ethical theoretical framework we need to propose so that we understand the concept of environment much better. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our whole approach is to understand the notion of environment. Understanding is very important when it comes to ethics. I have also mentioned that ethics deals with human action. And I am also telling now that it is about understanding. So, the point that I would like to conclude following these two concepts or emphasizing these two concepts is that how we can perform an enlightened action so that environment is protected uh, from the crisis which is uh, undergoing. 
So that kind of, so it is about an enlightened action, a wise action that every individual should or ought to perform in order to protect the environment. When we talk about uh, um, how philosophy has looked at the notion of environment, we also need to uh, see that how values are carried out or carried by nature could best be described often asking whether nature is morally considerable at all. Most of us uh, do not consider nature as a morally significant subject and that is the reason of the crisis and therefore in the nature the other biotic beings which live they are not given importance. So the balance which is required the ecosystem which has to be protected is not protected due to this factor. So we need to look at that what are the uh, grounds of protecting the ecosystems or how to deal with this uh, non-human animals or other biotic beings who are living in the ecosystem. So it is in that context we need to talk about the very moral foundation of environmental ethics and this foundation will help us understanding biotic or non-human beings which are living in the earth. Yes sir. Sir actually but uh, in your uh this type topics, environmental ethics, we frequently encounter the terms like values, moral and ethics. So we do not have much clear idea about what are those terms actually. So first uh, I would request you to distinguish these three terms. Achha. What is value, moral and ethics actually? Okay. How to distinguish these three terms? Ethics is uh, the science of uh, or theories of morals. If you, what is ethics? Ethics is about theorizing morals, okay. And when we theorize moral, we try to conceive what is moral and what is not moral. We try to understand what is moral and what is not moral. So it is in that context, we try to appreciate what is good and what is not good what is useful and what is not useful. So, so we, and that is how we talk about practicing values, preserving values. If we consider something is good, then we try to protect that for our interest, is not it? Or if I find something is useful, then I preserve it for my own well-being. Okay, so I preserve that for my good, for my well-being, is it not? So ethics which tries to theorize morals directly deals with values. Subset? It's part of moral. Let us don't use this term subset, bigger set. You know that uh, um, category I think in any uh, example sir yes let us say speaking truth is a moral value is not it don't harm others is a moral value is it sir not? can I add some values sir yes, yes sir. so India is uh, having more moral values sir so we are teaching our children Yidigas and Puranas and more, more moral stories and all. So by practicing the moral, moral issues, no, yes. the morality we are developing means so our life is getting valuable. Mm. True. Is by practicing uh, moral, we are acquiring values or what? Ah, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is not really acquiring values. Our understanding, our depth of understanding moral knowledge increases. So it is it is in that sense you try to you know extend yourself uh, to other life so when it comes to uh, harming the environment or harming other non human beings you find that if you are practicing moral values like you know he was talking about trees how to protect trees so you extend your your moral self to the non-human entity which is living in your surrounding. So that extension unifies or creates a moral bond between the humans who have understood themselves that 
they are made in the image of God and they are existing in the universe uh, to use natural resources, to use other beings. Okay? They are the master and the other beings are for their use. It's not it. So it is that understanding which has created imbalance. This particular kind of understanding is called, I mean termed as anthropocentric view. Okay, where man is at the center of the universe and everything which is around him, I mean the other biotic beings or non-humans which are around him, which constitute the environment are for his use. So if we take this theoretical perspective through which we try to understand which have been the case, you know, uh, not only from Aristotelian uh, period when the science began, but also during the enlightenment period. People have been championing this idea or advocating very seriously that how the natural resources are to be used to fulfill human dreams. But that has caused a serious damage to environment. So we need to change the theoretical perspective and look at how environment will be a life-centric kind of a ethical theory or we can articulate a life-centric ethical theory where the concept of anthropocentrism will be nullified. That is the, the basic idea. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sir, in India, nowadays, we are lagging in the ethics and moral values. Therefore, government of India and even government of Madhya Pradesh, they are thinking of starting the ethics and moral values in technical education and other education at college level to give this as a compulsory subject in this education. Sir. Particularly, yes. if you have very actively uh, know, engaged in watching television or newspapers. After the Delhi rape case, yes, which was you know, a very horrified case, the then Prime Minister of India announced immediately that we should have value education right from the school level. It should be part of our curriculum. This was announced. I don't know whether it, is, it has been followed thereafter, but the basic thing that we lack is, uh, my dear friend said that we have been following ethics in our everyday life, in our family, Puranas are taught. See the concept here is, we don't really look at this text critically. We don't really try to understand it. We have accepted okay, the way it was there or the way somebody has told us. We don't really rationally conceive ideas. Okay. So therefore, a critical reading of these texts are very important. Okay. Because sometimes, as we know, that we have taken these texts as the source of morals. And we have forgotten or we have been submissive to this text. I am not interested in that kind of thinking. I am interested in thinking in the lines of a being who is rational, active and also has a moral sentiment to understand the crisis the humanity is facing. So we have to really ignite the rational element in human life and try to look at how this text can be critically looked. That is what is my interest. Otherwise, you know, if somebody asks why you are doing it, you don't have an answer. So there is a deep reading necessary. Yes. Assimilating the concept. Okay, assimilation is one phase of, you know, one way of articulating morals. Actually, when uh, our colleague asked the question of the differences between ethics, moral and values, yes. when you started, it, uh, to me personally, huh. it got cleared. Huh. But when you ended now, huh. Now I got again confused okay. because you said that, if I heard correctly, ethics is to theorize morals. Yes, if somebody asks what is ethics, it is 
theorize, theorize the morals. Huh. But when now what I understood at the end, it looks sounds like that that ethics is more of like a action which we earned through moral understanding the value of an action. So if if I say example of a forest and trees, huh. so it is unethical on our part to cut the trees. Yes, it is because unethical. it has a value. Yes. So the moral is that if you cut the trees, you risk your life. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know because at the end it looks like that. No, see, when we talk about values, action, and theorizing, they are not to be treated as a separate concepts because I told uh, in the beginning that it is inevitable that we will not act. So everybody will act, like everybody is a thinking being, every human being will, is also an active agent. So they will perform action. Now the question is, what kind of action? So the moral has gone into our thought process and is also reflected through action, is it not? So there, the entire uh, concept has to be uh, you know, integrated and uh, then looked at the you know, theories of morals. Yes, sir. sir. Is attitude and ethics are interrelated or interdependent? Interrelated or interdependent? Very interesting questions. Values do not depend on your attitude. Values are, suppose something is good. Something is good irrespective of how you feel about it. Okay? It's not it. So, therefore, the question of dependency does not arise. If attitudal change occurs, does it mean the ethically also is, uh, he or she is no. uh, uh, proven correct? We can evaluate attitudes through certain norms or following a particular ethical theory. Yes, that we can do. But uh, values do not depend on attitudes. Is not it? So. Sir? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, as I understand what you taught that, uh, there is a chain uh, that thoughts, thoughts makes our routine and routine makes our habits and habits makes our character and finally character is our personality. So Correct. the moral that uh, we have studied or we have taught by our teachers or our parents, that is moral, that is during the year of 0 to 14, uh, as I distinguished. Mm -hmm. And the values are that what we have studied by the morals, either we accepted it or not. That is the values. Either we respect that morals or not. And uh, after the values, uh, what we have done and what we have reflect to our society, that is our ethics that kya humne siddhant follow ki apni life mein that should be after years of 45 so as i understand that moral is a theoretical knowledge which is given by our teachers or any other the values what we extract from it and the ethics what we had followed through the life by following the moral and the values as i understand by you partly i may be correct for the question that uh, many of the people have raised about ethics, as far as I know, anything illegal is unethical. That is the first thing. So if it has to be ethical, the first thing is the actions done by the person or the people or the society should be legally correct. Second, it should be morally correct if I'm correct. So the third one is the actions might be okay with me but it might be affecting the environment or the other person, which may be legally correct. So the next one is, fourth condition that should be applied to ethics is, what society thinks if I'm going to behave like this? If the society behaves like this, what I'm going to think? So uh, I think uh, four conditions need to be satisfied if I'm correct. No, uh, let me uh, tell you, when we talk about ethics huh? in an environmental context, which I have not really gone into. <laughs> I find that, see, when we look at ethics, we try to see that, what is it to be ethical? If somebody asks this question, you need to rationally articulate 
uh, and understand that this is what is right. Society had accepted slavery once upon a time. There were slaves and in Plato's society who talked about a democracy, uh, right of the citizen, in those societies there were slaves. Do you think Plato was not aware of it? And we also live in a society where we exploit the women. In a patriarchal society, women are exploited. Do you think our generation is not aware of it? Is not it? We live in a society where we also use children as laborers. Is not it? And we try to use natural resources best of our knowledge. Is it not? So when we talk about this in ethical you know, point of view, we try to see that where things have gone wrong and how things have to be corrected. In the society, people who have accepted it, I don't know which society we are talking about, but society per se if you have accepted it and you find something is definitely wrong or there is a very strong difference between you and the society, then either the individualistic idea is correct, I don't know what is, if you can give an example that will be shown, but in such society you find that something wrong is happening and therefore we need to change the norms, norms that are followed. So we would like to live in a better society. So therefore those who are arguing for environmental ethics, they are trying to show that how a moral extensionism is possible. The realm of the moral in which an individual live or try to live has to be extended. So we had a society and we lived in that society where slavery was, you know, was there and now it has been minimized or it is not there. We are living in a society or at least try to so that women are equal to us. Is not it? So there are provisions made either through the constitution or through, through some ways of living. There are scope for these people to raise a voice, to assert their freedom. So this is a way to show that how moral extensionism is happening. The scope of the real moral is expanding day by day. So there will be time when we will really think that you know, children are supposed to you know, go to school. And there will be also a time where we will stop, you know, like Amrita Devi, we will hog the, you know, the tree, we will directly identify ourselves with the tree. That you and me are not different from the non-human beings. Is it not? So that kind of identity is an example of moral extension. How you extend your moral being towards the other. That is what is about this sentiment of yours. At the age of 40, we realize that there is something wrong. The peers have told me something wrong. This is not what they should have told me. Why at the age of 40? So what is really making my psyche right from the beginning, right when we go to school? Look at the science curriculum. Now Gandhi made a very interesting example that our curriculum are made or framed in such a way that we see nature is something different. So this antagonism which has or the difference which has built up between the humans and the non-humans is right there from the school level, from the elementary level. Okay, so there is something wrong. We need to have a curriculum where nature and humans will coexist, is it not? So when we will talk about a future generation, we need to look at where we had gone wrong so that the future generation should not made a complaint at the age of 40. Is it not, sir? It is in that context when we look at environment, when we try to understand 
environment from an ethical point of view or make environment as a part of the discourse of uh, morals, we look at it from two points of views. One is environment as a field of significance. That's something which is meaningfully associated with me or it should be part of no, my being. So this field is interestingly an intentional field. It is an intentional field in this sense, I am experiencing the crisis. I am in a dialogue with the environment. I am having a conversation with an environment and this conversation happens in many ways. One of the conversation is that the poem that you, you know, wrote and you internalized the feeling of others or the skit which was uh, played here. Okay? So you internalize what is going on you know, in the world and try to make it part of your own being or self and see how meaningful it is. Is it not? When the Silent Valley movement was going on, everybody worked for it. Everybody tried to advocate that now we need to protect environment. Poets came, scientists came, people from all social startup could join because they could really show that how significant environment is. So when we understand environment, we need to look at that environment and the self or the humans are intentionally connected. So far, we have been treating environment as a, an objective phenomena. That yes, we try to measure it as science does. We treat it as an object and that is how it has been causally related to us. We try to understand environment in that way. But the change that we are looking for, the change that is to talk about an ethical, life-centric ethics, not anthropocentric ethics. In the life-centric ethics, life is the foundation in the sense that it will integrate all kinds of beings or it has the power to integrate all kinds of beings. So that will be shown when we look at environment, both from scientific perspective. I'm not saying that scientific perspective is meaningless. I'm trying to su suggest that along with the scientific understanding of the environment, we also need to place this idea that environment is a field of significance. It is, it is meaningful to us. So therefore, when we talk about globalization today, we see that everywhere market works. Okay? Somebody, an environment philosopher called David Cooper, I don't want to throw the names, but uh, he said that it is better to be a local citizen, environmental citizen, because I understand that how significant this particular tree uh, which has grown in my courtyard, how significant it is. I am living with it. This is typically in Hedegarian, those who I don't know how many of you take interest in reading philosophy or philosophical ideas, but I am sure you might be reading some poets and or the novelist. Hedegar says that I live with it. So that everyday association that I have with the tree or the pets okay, makes me a local citizen. And it is important that when you talk about environment, advocate the values of environment, we need to be a local citizen first. This is the idea. This is an example which uh, um, I wrote from David Cooper. Please read this. Sir, I could not understand that intentional relation huh. as, as an intentional object. object. So, if you can explain. I will explain. Uh, it is certainly important to explain. Now, every individual human being, as I said, is a thinking being, a very active being. And when we talk about thinking, thinking is an intentional activity. Now, what is it to be intentional? When somebody asks me, what do you think or what do you know? 
then in my thought i say i mean if i express i will say that i am thinking about something so this thinking is always directed towards something so it has got a directedness a feature of directedness and that makes thinking intentional so every human beings are intentional beings and as i was giving an example of the school or uh, or the tree in my courtyard that becomes an intentional object if somebody finds or in one fine day i find that the tree is not there tree has disappeared okay and i will always carry that image of the tree that is an intentional object so can we synonymously use the term impression something is created um, in our mind when we think of something else yeah you know, now these one can talk about impression so impressions is a source of knowledge but here intentional object is a very technical term used in the text so uh, even if the object is absent it has you know it lives in my uh, thought so that is a living object so the land say for example when somebody estimates the value he says i will give you 20 lakhs okay because that for him that is an object but for the real owner who every day goes to the field and has lived in there for him that is not just a piece of land that is you no know, something very intrinsically valuable it has got a value in itself you cannot really estimate the value so that is what so the, the tree which is i have planted it has got immense value i cannot really estimate what is the value of it so in that sense it is intentional object so this idea of heidegger is like this when we talk about living we really know its way of living the whole idea is that when you start living as a local citizen or understand the very significance of environment you find out a way of living okay and this is how uh, the way of living for heidegger means rationally how to get a to b how to dress people whom to avoid now these are the rational element which is part of knowing its way of living and every biotic being is aware of it right from a bird to a human this rational is common it's not that it is only available to a human being no it is also this reason i'm mean, or the reasons are available to all living beings my friend was asking about attitude and feelings and it is in this context attitude and feelings will have a subjective way of looking at the reality so there is a subjective element present in our moral attitudes so it is in that context if you uh, think that there is a difference no somebody say no this is how i live no this is how i have i regulate myself or conduct myself so there will be that subjectivity which we, which is present in all distinct human beings okay so that is fine so long as it is not harming others not affecting others life so attitude and feelings are part of you know our subjective way of uh, living but at the same time i was talking about integration we need to also integrate the subjective ideas with the objective way of understanding the environment now one question may arise that can we have a universal ethics so to this idea rolston and uh, light propose that why universal ethics is not possible 
please read this, sir. Um, anybody would like to ask any question on this, sir? Is universal ethics and universal principle are different? Uh, no, they are not different. I would uh, clarify why it doesn't conflict with uh, the previous uh, uh, talk. Now, when I talked about anthropocentric ethics, that considers man is at the center of the universe. Man is the source of morals because man can think, rationalize, articulate, frame ideas and govern, rule others. So this anthropocentric worldview, as I mentioned earlier, has caused some damage to the environment, to the ecosystem. So therefore, we need to change that ethical framework. Okay? So to change that ethical framework certainly needs a different rational, okay, different principles through which we can enlarge and extend the scope of morals. I am not saying thereby that humans are insignificant. I am saying that, that we can alter the ethical framework or we can extend the scope of ethics to include other beings no, within that framework and protect the rights and uh, things like that. Now the question is, so when I articulate that from a life centric ethics, I try to conceptualize new principles and these new principles will demand an attitudinal change, is not it? If we have the same attitude which we kept 50 years back, 100 years back following the enlightenment you know, ideas, then this will not be realized, is not it? To my knowledge, there is no conflict. Or to explicate little more on the second quotation which I have, it is a quote, is to tell you that there are morals which are culture specific, there are morals which are custom specific or religion specific, okay? but that should not affect or make ethics relative, particularly when I am talking about ethics as an applied discipline. Okay? So we cannot have relativism here, say for example, when we talk about animal ethics, animal rights, you cannot have one animal right here or another animal right somewhere other place in Andhra Pradesh or in Tamil Nadu there is one or in Maharashtra there will be one. No. Sir, I yes. can add one. The national Tamil poet Subramanya Bharati, the quote I can include here. So the right uh, passage I can include here. Okay. So the Tamil version I can tell and then I can translate that. Okay. So Kakai Kuruvi Engal Jadi. Nil Kadalum Malayam Engal Kutam, Noku Midamelam Avan entry Verilai, Noko Noka Kaliatam. So that's the meaning of this. So even the crow as well as the sparrow, they are all our relatives like that. And then comparatively the mountain, everything we are seeing, no? So it's all the part of our the human being also the part of that. So the Panja Buddha and all we are saying, no? So that included. So the holistic approach as well as the natural view, it is realized by the Subramanya Bharatiya in that word. So like that uh, Rabindranath Tagore also got many words and then the Gitanjali has given, envisaged all the visions like that. So we cannot imagine how the environmental aspects explain that Kitanjali. So definitely it's the quote and all really. So we cannot, the, as a human being, how can we imagine such a the powerful imagination as well as the realistic approach, as well as the global approach we can get it from Ravindranath Tagore. So that we can add here the philosopher and all, so the overview as well as the potential excellence they made, so that I can include here, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Sir, I have one doubt.
that uh, universal ethic principle that uh, i what i understand that uh, ethics uh, it comes from value that value leads to action so when you talk about uh, that uh, universal ethics value that means in one place that one principle is working like if you take the example that selling wine in gujarat is banned but selling in other state in open uh, it is allowed or in something in usa it's legal and, and the same things in india is illegal so we cannot have a theory related to ethics on the basis of what we can take the action so that's why i am confused actually hold on. how to determine that hold on i told you in the beginning very clearly that we are going to study environmental ethics which is an applied discipline i don't like to have an example that whether wine is permitted in gujarat or it is permitted in somewhere else my example should be like whether we should cut a trees here and save trees somewhere else whether we should no cut trees in himalayan range and plant few trees elsewhere that that has become a industrial policy is not it if you are cutting few trees then plant few trees as if one can replace the other i think that is the uh, appropriate example actually i i'm not sure whether uh, the other example will fit here sir first uh, thing is that when the cities get developed okay uh, government plant that is a four lane road okay but what happens that there is not much commuters are there not much vehicle is there they just develop the two lane road and then both side that plant the trees what happened after 10 years when the proper traffic is there they want to develop the four lane now at that time all the planted trees become a very huge and at that time environmentalists come forward and said they no cutting of trees not allowed or even law said there is no cutting of the trees these that it's not a problem but now what happens they develop the road and the trees are in between the road and many times there is chance of the accident this is the first thing second thing i mean this is a, whether this sort of cutting the trees ethical or unethical i'll tell you one example very recent example now they are going to uh, those who are aware of no beyond hiranandani there is a are colony you know about are colony there was a report the mayor says we'll take only 5% of it for development now it is like i was talking about moral extensionism okay i want to tell you that this identity of the humans and the identity of other biotic beings including trees and other living beings has to be there in one body in one framework now if somebody says i will operate only your right leg this has got some problem i if you want to make it fine i will cut it i will not utilize the other half of it will it in fact it is like that so if 5% of that is been used it will certainly affect the entire body is it not that's true sir but that's for are quality i am talking about a totally different example where no, the no. trees plant i i am talking about whether the trees are plant but we cannot replace their rainforest can no, we rain replace rainforest is a different issue i am not against that okay i am just talking about my case okay specific case when no, the, i will i will give an example are, in in between the road okay i mean that we cannot i mean traffic cannot be properly i have seen in many cities that sort of example is there that on the road only the trees are there because corporation cannot cut the tree and now because of that tree there is a chance of the accident so what can be done whether that sort of tree is to be cut or not second thing okay today only uh, dr maya told about the certain species are very disastrous i mean that even scientists are not finding the way i mean and they are affecting the ecology in some negative manner certain algae are there certain trees are there certain species like that okay so if that sort of trees or other things are there whether we have to cut that i mean we have to stop that production or i mean for the fertility or not so what what to do with that whether it's environmental ethically true in earlier slide you showed about that with the time with the space things are getting changed and yes. i mean by and large over here majority of are the scientists and engineers i mean we believe in a 1 plus 1 2 only i mean no, no, we, h2o see, means see, h2 and o only that I mean, is that see, is when, what... when things are keep on changing we don't believe 
I mean, that is something wrong actually. No, 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 no. If sir. you if you not allow yourself to think, see, I am I am not against the ethics, but I try to understand the what is the ethics. Now, first of all, you gave an example of whether cutting trees is allowed or not. Considering the specific significance, earlier slide you showed about the significance, significance of the environment. Correct. With the time and space, it's going to change. Fine. Now, if the tree is cutting accident, the tree is causing accidents. Okay. You should cut the tree or not. Yeah. That is where your example is. Mm. Then I think that is perfectly fine. If somebody is causing an accident, that tree is a reason for it. There then no I, I don't think one cutting one tree will uh, affect. But when you think of rainforest, that okay, true. which uh, Sundarlal Bahunguna is given example. Okay, when there is a massive tree cut happening in Himalayan range. And these trees were caught for what? Do you know yeah. why it was caught for? Construction of uh, one dam over there. It is cricket bed. So when people use such things without knowing what kind of effect it will have in future, that is the danger. So when you caught rainforest, when you try to eliminate them, then it has got serious effect. So that seriousness you have to measure, that kind of preference. See, the, the whole idea of environmental ethics is articulated with this view that there is some kind of preference utility to be given. So when you judge that this tree is significant and the other is not, I think uh, there is no problem there. It is not unethical actually. It is not unethical. Okay, thank you. But when you talk about massive de deforestation happening, it is certainly uh, uh, unethical because the impact is, it, it is huge. You cannot replace it with something else. Sir, if you take the same thing for a nuclear reactor, okay, we human beings think uh, some small region power, okay, and uh, we are putting that value on constructing some nuclear reactors, where uh, some impact happened, what is happening? Whole region, that we are not considering, that time what happens, universal ethics. <laughs> <laughs> As if now I have got a feeling that <laughs> I have been very, very ethical <laughs> and I am a kind of a non-human who is taken the responsibility of, I am, oh, you can call me a superhuman, <laughs> taken responsibility of judging what is ethical and what is non-ethical, rather than… Sir, we want what is environmental ethics. What is universal See, ethics? Okay. I told you, what my, is my point ethics? was very clear. Okay. The whole talk is to bring some kind of an enlightened understanding. Understanding is what I you know, emphasized. That once understanding happens, somebody said, I am confused. When somebody is confused, he has opened the door of understanding. Okay. So, opening so door similarly, it's when up, understanding happens, activity. action is not very far. If real understanding happens, I am sure it will reflect in your action itself. Sir, I have uh, some small answer for this, yes. what he has been struggling <laughs> for. I have been teaching a course called Human Values and Professional Ethics in my university. And uh, it says a simple example. Hanuman ji ki puja hum mangal or Saturday ko karte khali. But as a Budwar ko karne se naraj to nahi honge wo. To morals kehte hain ki Mangalwar ko or Saturday ko karo. But ethics kehte hain kabhi bhi karo. And that is uh, the rational example as you said. Ki peer kaatna galat baat hai. Lekin agar wo aapko nuksaan de raha hai to ek do kaat sakte. Yeah, thank you. What she was possibly trying to suggest here is that when we perform this kind of duty, we should ask to our conscience. Conscience is a great source of uh, morality or ethics. So we should ask ourselves. We should be convinced. Now somebody is convinced that every day puja is important. Somebody is convinced that the work itself is a great puja, a great sacrifice, a great yajna that he is performing. So it differs from, so what is important is that you are convinced that something is good, that conviction is important. 
and conviction doesn't come easily. So this is what I was uh, trying to suggest when I um, began my talk um, that there's some kind of a moral extensionism is uh, uh, possible and uh, that will bring um, the non-human subject and treat them as moral subject. So the earlier concept is that human beings are <coughs> rational beings, human beings are moral agents, human beings decide what is right and wrong and this ability to take decision, ability to rationalize and recognize the value of you know, things is bestowed upon human beings, it's a human responsibility. Now I would like to further add following Ralston and many others that the other non-human beings or other biotic beings can be treated as moral subjects. They are not objects. They are not objects in our world. Okay? We can treat them as moral subjects and then talk about ethics and values, things like that. So that is what is a, a distinction which I am drawing between moral agents and moral subjects. So all moral agents are moral subjects, but not all moral subjects are moral agents because ultimately it is human responsibility which matters. Humans have the ability to decide, judge, uh, other non-humans uh, cannot. So it is in that sense we own the greater sense of responsibility always that will form a sense of uh, ecological consciousness which is for some is a radical way of thinking or exhibiting moral concerns and it is also ultimately a kind of a reconsidering certain values which was not available to us before in anthropocentric uh, world. Please note down this reference Andrew Light and Holmes Ralston's third Environmental Ethics Anthology, Blackwell, 2006.